So far, we've translated ECAD geometries from Altium Designer to ANSYS by using ODB++ as the go-between format. Another popular layout tool that can generate ODB++ is Mentor Expedition. In this video, you'll learn how to translate Mentor Expedition designs to ANSYS SI Wave. First, a word to anyone who is familiar with our older translation flows. With Mentor Expedition releases EE 7.9.1 and higher, the only path for translation is ODB++. Previously, for versions 2005 and 2007, Mentor Expedition used a different type of design flow requiring the HKP database. This model is no longer supported, since ANSYS and Mentor Graphics have moved to the ODB++ format for Expedition 7.91 and higher. Mentor Board Station, Board Station XE, and Pads are still supported. Open up Expedition XPCB Layout. This tool is part of the Mentor Expedition Enterprise product family, used to create complex PCB designs. Let's open up one such complex design. Navigate through your folders to find the PCB file. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this pads layout design. It has the extension .pcb. The design loads and appears in Expedition PCB layout. This board is used to prototype IoT designs and embedded applications and products. To view the layers that make up this board, let's bring up the Stackup Editor. This PCB has 25 layers. 12 of them are metal layers, and the remaining 13 are dielectric layers. On the Metal tab, you'll see that all the metal layers are assigned the material copper. Go to the Dielectric tab. Based on the values of permittivity, loss tangent, and thermal conductivity, we can conclude the dielectric material is FR4. Exit this window. To export ODB++ from this design, go to the Output menu and select ODB++. This opens the ODB++ output window. Let's expand this dialog to view all the options. Define the desired output path. Define the output name. I'll name it after the original design file. Also, define the path for the log file. Now there are several basic commands for exporting. You probably want to keep the original net names as is, so leave the Neutralize Nets option unchecked. If you neutralize the net names, they'll become generic names that don't have any association with the logical functions on the board. Generate silkscreen data is up to your discretion. Part numbers is important, since this ensures that with the latest versions of A-Links, we can look at the capacitor and resistor information. I like to have the board outline or a package outline. You can round the corners. Click the Advanced Options button. You'll want to keep the EDA data, so leave this option unchecked. If you need net names, leave this option unchecked. If you want, you can bring in advanced packaging data. Because ODB++ is a manufacturing format, you have the ability to specify how non-functional pads are handled. You can also create or remove non-functional pads within ANSYS tools like SIWave and HFSS 3D Layout. The most important thing is to make sure you've selected all the fab data that you want to bring in. I'm going to leave the silkscreen data unchecked because it's not relevant for analysis. I've selected all the other layers and info under the fab data. Remember to check D112 since this contains data for the drills. As for the assembly, DRC, and user layers, those do not need to be checked. It's very important that you compress the output into a single file, so I'll leave this option checked. Now I'll select OK. So the ODB++ export request is now being processed. Once the export process completes, a log file is generated. Click OK. The ODB++ directory and its TGZ file are generated at the specified location. Now open ANSYS SI Wave. On the Import tab, select Mentor Expedition Design and ODB++ version EE 7.9.1 or later. The Import ODB++ Design dialog appears. You can leave the ODB++ archive type set to Directory. Browse to the location of the ODB++ directory. I had specified my ODB++ export to the Output folder under PCB, and my ODB folder is named after the design file as specified during the export and expedition. Point to the ODB folder and then click the Select Folder button. Now click the Import button. 
You can see in the Select Nets to Import dialog that all the net names are being retained. These names would have become generic if you had selected the Neutralize Net Names option in Expedition. There are 652 nets in total to import. We'll bring in all of them, so click the Import Configuration button. The design is translated and appears in SI Wave. Close the SI Wave workflow wizard. Fill all the layers and make the traces, planes, vias, pads, and components visible for all the layers. So here we have the translated version of the expedition design, ready for analysis in SI Wave. This concludes part 12. In the next part, we'll compare the stackups between the two products and also import properties of the passive components into SI Wave.